Kelly Emerson for ESPN Boston High Schools here at Nickerson Field for the boys MIAA Lacrosse State Championships. Division 1, 2, and 3 teams all took the field throughout the day in the battle for the title. D2 Hingham faced Medfield in the boys' first game of the day. Things tied up late in the first quarter, but not for long when Matthew Treber found the net from Kevin McCordick to put the Warriors up 2-1. But they wouldn't stop there. Early in the second quarter, Nigel Reef adds to the five straight for the Warriors, raising the score to 6-1. Coming into the third, the Harbor men were very much back in the game when Jack Ulrich steps up past midfield with the rip making it 7-5. That Harbor men momentum was stolen though when Jack McLean scored his second of the day after the Warriors penalty expires, boosting them to 8-5. Two goals weren't enough for McLean though and he went on for the hat trick into the fourth, 9-5. Medfield continued to distance themselves the rest of the game, enough so to earn the Division II state championship title. Final, 13-5. Next to take the field were Division I Duxbury and Acton Boxborough. Jumping late into the second quarter, the Colonials' Joseph Biggin celebrates a little too early as the goal was waved off here with a crease violation. Things remain 2-1 going into the half. Flash ahead to the third quarter, Colonials' James Kelly finds the ball from Joe Cormier, swinging it into the net to tie it up at 3-3. With 3.03 remaining in the third, Christopher Wiggins with a spin and rip allows the Colonials to take their first lead of the game, 4-3. The Dragons weren't prepared to call it quits though. Into the fourth quarter, All-American Trevor O'Brien with the equalizer for Duxbury leaving the score 4-4 at the end of regulation. One overtime just wasn't enough for this Division I matchup. With less than two minutes in the second overtime, Chris Wiggins solidified the win for the Colonials and they would go on to take the championship 5-4. In the final game of the evening, Division III Dover Shearborn took on Cohasset. Flash ahead early in the second quarter, score tied at three, Cohasset pulls ahead when Willem Golden whips it past Jack Fontaine to give Cohasset the 4-3 lead. They would add four more to take a commanding 8-3 lead at the half. However, in the second half, Dover Shearborn would begin to climb back. A little back and forth between Chris Williams and Grant Gregory leads to Williams finding the back of the net to make it 9-7 Cohasset late in the third. Soon after, another Williams shot gets deflected, bumps off John McGilgan, and goes into the goal to cut the deficit down to one. We'll cut all the way to the end of the fourth quarter. Score now 10-9 Cohasset. Things getting desperate for the Raiders as in the final seconds of regulation, Dover Shearborn loses the ball, McGelgan comes up with it, but after getting harassed, his pass for John Conti goes long and ends up right in front of the net. Fortunately, the shot by Barry Laidman goes wide. So here we go, just four seconds left. The shot on net ends up being an easy save for Conti as time runs down and the Cohasset Skippers are your 2014 Division III state champions. I'm now joined by Scott Barboza. Scott, Acton Boxborough took their first state championship over Duxbury's established state power. Yeah, it's really, uh, you know, we've talked about it the last couple of years. Is there ever going to be, uh, quote unquote, perhaps changing of the guard here in Massachusetts? Lacrosse, obviously, Duxbury, we all know, is the established team to beat. It's what every program, I think, across the state strives to be. Um, you know, all the credit to Coach Sweet and what they've built over there. But uh, I think today the credit goes to Pat Amendolia and that program at the at AB, which, uh, you know, they, they've kind of been knocking on the door the last uh, couple years here, getting to the semifinal stage. And then finally this year with redistricting, uh, they knock off DCL rival LS to get here in a very dramatic game there. And then, of course, uh, you know, going to overtime here. Uh, what a game. Uh, what a finish for them. And uh, that's a really a huge statement for that program. Uh, top line talent really across the board there. Hunter Arnold is a finalist for Mr. Lacrosse. He was an All-American this year. Uh, JT Kelly, another All-American talent there. I mean, this is a really deep, talented team, and they showed it today. Uh, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with, uh, again, the perennial best team in the state, and uh, they came away with the hardware. It was also a very exciting day for Medfield, especially for first-time head coach John Isaac. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, sixth state title here for Medfield program as a whole, but the first for Coach Isif. And, uh, you know, I wrote about this earlier this year when Mudfield played Dover Shoreborn the second time. Um, no disrespect meant to any of the coaches out there, but I think you'd be really hard pressed to find a coach that has the kind of emotional connection to his players that John Isif has. And that's really a result because uh, he coached most of these players, uh, these senior players, 
since they're in fourth grade uh, as a town travel coach. Um, so he knows uh, all these boys, he knows their families, you know, they, they, they've, you know, gone on the road together, shared hotel rooms, uh, you know, going on the road, playing, you know, and travel lacrosse tournaments. And, uh, you know, this is really special for him. Um, he got choked up after that game against Dover Sherborne, and he got choked up again here today, realizing that this is the last time that he's actually going to get to to coach these kids. And, and it means a lot uh, for him to be able to see these kids win another state title and then, of course, go on to bigger and better things with, uh, you know, so many of them going on to college lacrosse careers here. Um, I think from, from that perspective, it's really, uh, it's very unique uh, kind of situation that a, that a coach can actually, you know, see a group through uh, to that extent. So it's it's really a tribute to the entire uh, community there, which of course, uh, you know, we spoke about Duxbury before. I, you know, Medfield is absolutely one of those uh, perennial contender programs. Um, don't doubt that they will, even with all that they lost this year, that they will be back here uh, again this year because they just simply find a way and of of course, uh, I think as long as they have somebody named Treber on their roster, of course, uh, Robert, the goaltender, is moving on. And another All-American and uh, Mr. Lacrosse finalist there. But his little brother, Matthew, really stepped up today. Uh, you know, had some injury problems throughout the season and then uh, really went to coach and peti petitioned his way to be back in a starting role and to come back here today and was uh, a huge offensive catalyst for them. And it was also a very, very crazy finish to our last game of yeah. the day between uh, the Raiders and the Skippers. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, every time you thought this game was over, it was like that old slasher fic, the reanimator. And, uh, you know, it just kept coming back and back. 30 seconds left to go. Uh, DS applying the pressure. Skippers hemmed in in their own end. And uh, 30 seconds, they, they still get two looks at the cage. It, it pretty pretty crazy with the turnover mixed in there. Uh, there was a really an open net kind of look um, with <laughs> you know things kind of broke down defensively for Cohasset there not exactly as uh, as coach would have drawn it up there but uh, ultimately worked out at the end a really good uh, game of runs there uh, DS really made you know kind of their run in the middle portion of this game with a 5-1 run and then Cohasset came back uh, Cole Kissick uh, you know talked about in the post game here being able to finish this one off um, obviously Cohasset made a, a very deep run to a Super Bowl uh, state championship I should say in Division 6 uh, in football he was a part of that team and then obviously coming back here playing DS which by extension has become a rival the second straight year in a row that these teams have played for a D3 title this year the state title um, being able to finish it was all they wanted to do and ultimately it wasn't wasn't pretty in the end but uh, it's effective and it's a state championship well that'll do it for us here at Nickerson Field and for the season but make sure you stay connected with us throughout the summer for all updates on all your Massachusetts high school sports teams for Scott Barboza, I'm Kelly Emerson.